Welcome Hi. to the first uh, edition of GS Congress Meets Friends. So the first edition, we warmly welcome Kirtana, aka KK, and Robin. Kirtana, you're sitting in Munich. Robin, you're sitting in Berlin. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So welcome that you've joined us. So for all the others, uh, and uh, yeah, for all the others, Jazz Congress Meets Friends is a new format which was based on some uh, ideas which we had um, as a result of the post-corona decisions about postponing GS Congress. And we are all affected by COVID-19 as GS Congress as well. And um, since we are physically distanced, we want to say stay socially connected. And that's the idea behind it, just to invite some friends and talk about um, different topics. So the first topic is uh, in the first episode, let's say, is very open, where we talk about COVID-19 and the impact for yeah, how we experience it. So in this format, it's also an MVP kind of, where we want to collect the feedback of the people who are watching us right now or delayed on the recordings of the stream. And we would like to get your feedback and uh, positive ones and also things, uh, things you think we can improve on. So let's share some thoughts, approaches, um, in order to create a positive vibe for the future out of the crisis. And I would like to just start with a quick introduction round. I'm Johannes, I'm one of the organizers behind GS Congress. And it's my first time I'm doing a live stream, which means as well, I'm kind of nervous but I enjoy it and I would like uh, to ask you, Kirtana, for can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi, I'm Kirtana. Uh, if you can't spell my name, you can always put KK. It's, it's okay, guys. I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Um, I was a speaker for JS Congress last year. So because of JS Congress, I actually got a job and I got to move to Munich and then Corona happened and I kind of uh, had got laid off but as most people in probation probably are right now. So I'm aggressively searching for a new job, but uh, well, we'll discuss more about that soon. And um, yeah, I work with web, JavaScript and all that cool stuff. All right, thanks for the introduction. So Robin, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, I'm Robin. Um, my main job is um, organizing and giving IT workshops. So uh, a few years ago, I founded the company workshops.de. Uh, and uh, I'm primarily known in the JavaScript scene for uh, community portals like angular.de or React, uh, react.js.de. And uh, since last year, um, also the NGDE conference. So um, I really love the community work in the JavaScript scene and I put a lot of effort in it and I also like teaching. Um, yeah, I also run uh, meetups like Angular Berlin meetup, Angular Ruhr meetup. Um, and um, yeah, I do a lot of JavaScript community stuff and um, community and COVID-19. It's like, um, yeah, we have to think different. So I'm really happy to, to be here. Thank you. That's a great transition uh, to the topic about COVID-19. So I did some research like when preparing as an interviewer and one of the main things got recommended is like do not ask closed questions. So the first question is very open. So my question to you is like how did the current COVID situation impacted your life? So he was first. Um, ladies first. Oh. <laughs> So uh, next time it's you, Robin. So I'll take this one. Uh, so for me, the impact was um, quite unexpected. Uh, my my previous employer, I guess it'll be rude to call them out at this point. So I'm, I'm going to call them nameless. So they kind of sponsored me from India to come to Germany. And I actually had a great time with them. But as, my, as I understand, at last month, they kind of let go of, everybody in probation, all the contractors, you know, it, it really hit them hard. And it really made so much more worse because they're in the tourism industry. 
So the last status meeting that I had attended with them on the first week of March, like revenues were negative 70% or something like that. Like it was pretty bad. And that is like beginning of March. I have no idea how the situation is like for services and people in the tourism industry. You know, it's, it's kind of dead and people are hoping it will come back soon after the whole pandemic situation is over. Uh, so uh, personally, I, I was um, I, I, in Europe, as you know, when you when you are not a European citizen, you need to come, you, ha you need to have a lot of bureaucratic stuff completed, you need to get a bank account, blue card, all that stuff. Thankfully, I got all of that done. I was just one month shy of finishing my probation before this happened. So it, it's not good, but at the same time, it's much better than for somebody who came like in February and, you know, it's just for very new for them, you know? So, and I do know that there are people like that right now, you know, people, we did, nobody who expected this to happen, people who came to Germany in like February and then got stuck in situations like that. I, I do know a couple of former colleagues in that situation. So uh, hopefully people are all hunkering down and, you know, we, we can get through the worst of this soon and go back to a situation where we can all, you know, get jobs and go back to that kind of an IT situation. And at least as engineers, we're, as software engineers, we're really fortunate because we can work from home you know to a large extent we can take our work home and do social distancing so our field is pretty pretty great for that um but at the same time we also have to consider that you know uh, we, we can support other people and that there are i've seen and i've tried to participate in a couple of programs where people who until now, they have not been digitized or haven't really transitioned into using any kind of technology. Right now, we have a scope to support them. You know, we're like, hey, grandma, this is Zoom. How do, you, how do you like using this now? You know, we can't see each other anymore. So I've been hearing some really interesting stories in that aspect as well, you know, as software engineers, how, how we can contribute. So it's been a mixed bag the last month, for sure. So you introduced Zoom to your grandmother and your grandfather. My grandfather, but I don't think he's going to use it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was t telling my mom to like teach him, but I, it, after you hit the high 80s, you're like, you give up, you know, it's like, I don't need this stuff. <laughs> uh, Robin, how did the COVID-19 situation uh, impacted your life? Yeah, so, um, yeah, my life, they like two parts, maybe more. So uh, first, um, as a company, uh, so uh, we like uh, four employees working uh, at the company and we have many freelancers. So uh, the change there was in the communication was not so big because uh, we work in remote first by default. So that was okay. So our daily work life was like the same as before uh, but we do on-site trainings and so on-site trainings were cancelled completely and um, that uh, changed a lot in the revenue stream um, so we are really really glad that we have like uh, the beginning of the year was, was really good so we had really uh, a bunch of workshops uh, many talented people that um, helped us to build more and more and um, yeah now we could work from home in theory, but no customers booking us. <laughs> so it's like uh, also like a little bit sad. So we have like 20% of customers uh, who agree to run remote workshops. And we at the moment uh, trying to, to change a bit from like full-time remote work workshops to like half day remote workshops all over the day. So it's also a positive thing because uh, now it's easier for us to uh, convince people to learn something longer. So we, we can say, okay, let's split the workshop in like five days or 10 days and you can work every day a bit uh, and you don't have to pay for travel or hotel or any, any, any other stuff. So that's really good. So um, yeah, we like running on a really low, low percentage of, of possible workshops, but it's okay. Uh, we're using our time, for example, in our company at the moment to uh, teach kids at school with like start of uh, some, some programming start things. We like created, for example, like a fla Flappy Bird workshop where now kids can can program Flappy Bird and do something. It's like, okay, we 
yeah, we 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 can use our, our our time anywhere for any serious business. So let's do something beneficial for the world. Yeah, <laughs> serious with his bunny eggs. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, yeah, we we try to use our times. And as like uh, um, Katana said, like yeah, we are like um, yeah, like privileged in our situation that we have jobs where you can do something. So we try to keep the company running, but otherwise try to help other people. Yeah, I also uh, showed my grandma how she can like uh, video call with other people, and you yeah, know, no, sometimes I see her um, her her ear when she's like, "Hello," <laughs> so and I have a really really focus on, on, on her ear. But she's really nice and she's really happy then, and now she's getting better in it. So yeah, and um, yeah, personal life is a little bit different. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I, I I'm at the moment um, primarily living in a small like house on a lake uh, where nobody, uh, no, no other person is because normally I living in Berlin. And when you, uh, in Berlin, it's not dangerous or something, but it feels like you have to wash your hands every one minute when you go to the bus or you go to the to the door or something. So I'm, I know more on the countryside uh, and um, it's more relaxing here because here no people where, where you are afraid of, afraid so to, to spread the virus. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's a both thing. So company, it's okay personal life is like other so it's it's changed it's not better it's not worse it's it, it, it's changed and now see what's what's going the next mm -hmm. so one one topic i'm quite interested in observing and i'd be interested in your observations as well is communication like since most of the companies um are or let's say almost all companies uh, try to switch to remote first and as well, the people are staying at home and doing like the self uh, quarantine kind of. Did you observe anything regarding communication, like on a business level and on a non-business level, compared to the situation before? Like how you you deal with uh, people? Like do you have more video calls? Like I heard that tele beers are getting now a trending topic. Um, how do you stay in contact and how it's the communication like compared to the to the situation before right now? Yeah. Who wants, should, should I go first this time? Yep, yep. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you as you already told me, uh, uh, um, uh, tele beer or like remote beer, like after work beer, or after work hangouts uh, increased a lot, uh, definitely. And also like, um, connected a lot of people. Um, so uh, I, I, I also uh, introduced like a, a remote after work beer every Friday for everybody. And it's so interesting how many people connect now that never met in real life uh, in, 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 yeah, in like a day life. It's like a friend of me of Dortmund and um, my, my other friend from, um, from Munich now like coaching each uh, each other because they were like, oh, it's really nice, let's talk again. And so uh, also like many people uh, really need this uh, kind of exchange because they're really isolated in home and they just need not just work, just free time. And so we also like play games online and it was so funny. Uh, I just installed uh, Steam. I don't know if you know it, it's just this gaming account thingy. And I, and I think I stopped gaming when Steam come up. <laughs> Then I was like, it was like 2000s, like Counter-Strike 1.3. And I never never started gaming. And now, yeah, I see myself like nearly every weekend. I I, I even bought a controller again. <laughs> and like gaming with like friends just to do something together you can do remotely. Um, yeah, and it's really nice. And um, but also kind of exhausting because sitting like in a in a in a bar or restaurant, just talk for two hours and go or go for a walk. It's different. Um, it's different than really staring at the uh, at the screen like for like two or three hours, and I think it's kind of exhausting in a different way to uh, for, for this. So this is like the the virtual life changes for me. <laughs> How is it on your side, KK? Yeah. So for me, um, I don't share my apartment with anybody. So I think it's it's like the one time I talked to my mom and she was like really worried about me and we were like arguing about something my neighbor kind of tapped the wall like come on I never talk anything but you're too loud like that's the literally the only time my neighbor tapped at the wall usually it's it's really quiet I have a feeling my neighbors are kind of I don't know if they can hear well like I don't think my my walls are really soundproof but I really don't think they can hear because I play 
ridiculous indian music in the morning in the evening in the middle of the night and then they sat, somehow they put up with it you know <laughs> and i think like for the last five months i actually went home in january and i can't talk to them like every single day i talk to them but when you know that everybody is at home and everybody is at safe you don't talk to your family or your friends too much it, it's fine the moment you know oh our flights are cancelled india is completely in lockdown then you start just worrying about stuff you know that's something i realized like even when i'm going to sleep my my family is probably like four hours ahead they probably asleep i'm still worrying what if something happens to my family to my grandfather to my aunt like it's just just wordless worry and and the only thing that helps sometimes it's it's just i open up youtube and i and they listen to bollywood music it's the most cliche stuff <laughs> ever but it helps yeah. <laughs> and i realized like over the past couple of of weeks i i got in touch with with so many people from like college and in, just in general people who i didn't think i would get in touch with them but they were like reaching out like hey are you okay by those are just three lines but it it feels so good when sabri just reaches out like are you okay or good bye Th- that's enough this makes you feel so good and one one thing i noticed in my communications at least is instead of thanks and regards i'm now i've not changed that to please stay safe kirtana it's, it's such a weird shift to my footer in in emails you know so definitely and i think i think the the challenge of this is uh, it's so new to so many of us you know we were like uh, at least a couple of months ago we were all talking about how we were getting into isolation there were like so many photos of people just standing in the same room looking at a uh, mobile phone instead of talking to each other now we are all in different rooms but looking at the same mobile phone to talk to each other you know so i think communication and connectivity wise this is probably a very positive change it's, it's, i'm just very curious to see what the future of this is going to be you know in in terms of um how it's going to peter out and i i kind of uh, recognize myself as a pseudo introvert as in like when i'm with people i'm happy talking to them but once i'm done talking to people i'm like <sighs> people are done like after this conversation that's going to happen i'm going to be like people are done i don't have to talk anymore so i'm going to spend some very quality time with netflix so but you hit the point after quality time alone where you realize i'm bored of like myself i i need people this is such a new thing that i'm experiencing so and to an extent uh, you you can it's it's never when you digitally talk to somebody it's never the same thing as having them face to face you know you always miss that but i'm very curious to see how as as a person with technology like i was i was reading up about how zoom servers are now being fortified like that's people say like you're salty yeah that's that's the the technology tea that's keeping me alive i just i'm just going through twitter like okay what are the zoom jokes what are the remote jokes i'm going to see today yeah and and twitter and and stuff like that they people are so hilarious with the current situation it's so depressing but they come up with like the best jokes so it's difficult yeah but i'm i'm starting to see the silver lining in it as well you know i see So by the way communication uh Robin you're uh, organizing a lot of meetups and a conference as well so i guess the, the impact is quite huge on that do you like how did you observe this impact when it comes to organizing uh, especially meetups or uh, conferences like how was your impact are you doing already live streaming like do you do a break um how do you handle the situation as organizer yeah so um we uh, on the meetup side we already um had a remote meetup uh, meetup um, like three weeks ago so like in the in the beginnings um where we uh, also used zoom for it um it was the angular ruhr meetup uh, in uh, yeah located in Essen, <laughs> so located everywhere, it was really nice um, because it was a remote meetup uh, for the first time that actually uh, before was scheduled as an on-site meetup. Um, and um, yeah, we all 
uh, we announced it as a remote meetup and people really were into it. And it was really cool because like it was remote. Some people came that would not join before, but most of the people um, who I see every time on the meetup were actually there with the camera on and was like, ah, nice. Ah, are you fine? Are you good? Are you cool? It was really nice to, to like check on, on people. And then uh, afterwards, we, we already, uh, we, we also uh, did a beer. Uh, like a like a after conference beer because every time after after the meetup we go to a pub and drink a beer together who who wants and was the same in the in this remote setting so it was really nice and um for the for the Berlin meetup we uh, haven't done it yet um because um yeah uh, sadly one of our um of, of our organizers is uh, in quarantine but it's um she's healthy so it's okay but uh, we were like okay let's first get your uh, and also she has a kid so it was like okay do your do your thing we postpone it but i think we we also will go there um so i think for the meetup it's easy for the conference um the ngde um is planned for um, august this um this year and uh we will decide this year um no, no this this week sorry not this year <laughs> this um this week um if we really want to do it this year or if you want to postpone it uh we have like a strong opinion inside our team but haven't commit, um, communicated it um, already outside um, because even if we go public in August, uh, if, if we run the event in August, uh, we need a lot of people to attend because we are organizing it at non-profit. So we don't have much profit margins where we can say, oh, it will be okay. So we have uh, like a non-profit event and haven't so much money left from left uh, last year. So it's really hard to decide, okay, we, we, we all love this event. We want to make it happen. But it's a financial risk we have to to, to carry on our on our private shoulders uh, sh shoulders to do it, and um, so um, yeah, I think sadly we have to to postpone uh, our conference to uh, to to next year, uh, and um, yeah, it's really sad. Uh, but I don't think it's possible to really really do it. So let's see, and uh, maybe some someone who's already bought a ticket for this, it's a surprise. <laughs> maybe we could, we're going to announce this week. So it's all, yeah, we, um, yeah, I, th I think it will be the, the best for all of us to really do it in a safe space next year than worrying months and weeks about uh, could it happen in which format, then only 100 people came, then we have private financial trouble. So like a conference is a different, different uh, task or also financial construct than a meetup. Mm -hmm. So that's really harder to decide and think. But you know, Johannes, you had the same. So I think today, uh, today was the first day of the of the JS Congress, yeah. Uh, tomorrow it would have been the first day. So today it would have been an exhaust, a very intense day. By doing the whole preparation, I think right now we would be on time by just finishing all the um, assembling stuff, having the the main conference hall ready, doing the last tech check, and in about one hour and five minutes we would uh, start with the speaker dinner and move then to the pre-party but yeah <laughs> having the same cheers there is water. that's the mug from last year because i remember the speaker dinner last year it was like whoa mm -hmm. yeah yeah we we had the same situation yeah um i would like to do one shout out because some um, questions are already arriving on youtube uh, feel free to post your questions. I will ask another question right now, which is prepared, and then we start with answering the questions coming in the YouTube channel. So my last question, um, which is related to communication as well, and uh, Kirtana, you are very active in speaking at international events. Um, what did change on your side? Do you see like that more and more events are going into the, the um, online or live streaming option? How did you see the changes on the on the speaking on the speakers side? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think on one hand, you know, it's it's sad that this situation had to happen like this for it to happen. But on the other hand, I'm seeing 
like via on twitter or some other social media so many people now have access to great speakers and great sessions you know i got a chance to listen to front conf which was supposed to be hosted at the at the uh, microsoft um, office i think in munich uh, last month but last minute i it, they had to take it online and kudos to the organizers um those guys did a great job i i watched almost every single session they had some excellent speakers and um, like but i think it's tomorrow or day after i i i signed up for magnolia js you know uh, i'm in the web space so i can only talk for web conferences that i see but not just not just about conferences you know i see that plural site has a lot of their courses for free so it yes it's a difficult time for all of us but i think the community is really coming together to just support people one all, all together you know and i as i understand like not just the financial aspect when you when you guys have a conference you also worry about the attendees and of course you can always make money back but if you have a attend a, a conference with 200 people and somebody falls really sick because of your conference that's something that you definitely have to carry on your conscience and that will definitely impact the next event you have you know better be safe than be sorry and uh, is, does it really impact my performance as a speaker yes i'm still getting used to the whole talk to a webcam framework um i also i'm a part of toastmasters just like a speaking uh, support group and uh, Toastmasters last month they were deciding whether or not I I was I had won a competition in Munich and the next level was going to be in uh, I'm not sure if it's in Nuremberg or Stuttgart one of the places in Germany itself and I was going to compete and last minute they took the whole thing online yeah and this really um, like I'm supposed to evaluate a person but it's very difficult to evaluate a speaker when they're doing it online on the on the webcam and more than evaluation for the speakers as well it's very difficult for them to use their hands get get their point across and there are so many points of failure because of the technical issues right now i didn't think about it but as it's 6 pm the sunlight is directly coming to my face and there's so many shadows you know i i didn't know this until i sat here this exact minute so so all these tiny tiny things that that would not be a possibility or a problem if we had a stage and all that set up yes but at the same time it's it's good that we are finding ways around this you know as engineers our fundamental job description is problem solvers so i'm i'm really happy that that we are finding finding ways to solve these problems and of course taking everything online is one one solution not not easy in any any aspect not easy but that's that's what we have to do you know when when you're faced with problems we have to evolve in a way that makes sense and i'm looking forward to how this will this will change speaking fundamentally you know i i i want to see if like next year when when conferences come back online if they have if they support more people joining online you know and and a great point that i heard was for a long time people who with disability they were asking for the same thing and it was really not happening for them you know uh, add captioning or add options for people to to listen in remotely because of their disability they could not be in place so like we are facing a small percentage of disability right now and we are making so many changes so hopefully this this will change the way that we tackle lots of lots of problems even in our area where like we like to think you know software engineers were very self aware we are very inclusive of different or different aspects different backgrounds even hopefully from this experience we can also learn how we can be even more inclusive and even more understanding of different problems and you know we go through tough times and i'm hoping the next time next year with both uh, ngde and for js congress we can have a better show from all our learnings right now so we have one question um from the chat um how do you see uh, that this situation is changing our daily lives and um do you see companies uh, accept more remote based workforce so what's your opinion on that robin 
Um, so I think companies are now pushed to just try it because they don't have any other option. So, and I, and I think it's good. Um, and for me, it's like, um, so it's like full-time remote is really, really hard, I, th I think, because sometimes uh, you, uh, when the project starts, it's really useful to uh, to get to know your individuals, everybody together and know, ah, okay, this is your personal situation and this is how you interact and other things. So um, like, I don't, I don't think um, it's it will be go completely into full remote now everything, but I hope, uh, even uh, also on the aspect of um, some uh, some planet saving mechanisms like flying for like a one hour meeting from Berlin to Munich, like many, many people really doing this, that like uh, like calls and meetings that are really unnecessary to do on site uh, can be can be done via via video call via phone and also that remote work um, is okay and it's uh, also like more productive. And um, also, I, I think because many people are now really experience intense remote work because they have to work remote, they also see that the social distancing and this sometimes it's nice just to grab a coffee with with, with someone and doing something. So that they also appreciate this, not not like as it was before, like I need to work online, I need to work remote, and you are so so sad. So uh, also like. Yeah, but maybe I want to work two days a week in the office because it's really nice to to get everybody together and uh, we want to do a barbecue or whatever. So um, yeah, um, I think that will be easier to work remote. Um, what will that will benefit, but also people will uh, appreciate what a nice office can uh, can really uh, be a good ground for for a good life because like we work most of us work eight hours a day. And so uh, you you really want to have a great great environment for that. And um, yeah, I think it will shift a little bit, but also will uh, sorry um, I couldn't uh, sorry will uh, um, appreciate uh, things. That was my theory that <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. So do not disturb. Yeah. So end of my monologue. Sorry. Right. Um, so KK, how do you see um, this, this uh, situation is changing our daily lives? And um, do you think that um, companies will accept more remote based workforce? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, one, one more change I'm hoping that it will bring is that for sure right now we are not working from home, you know, like it's, it's not a complete remote work. It's just working from home during a crisis, like the, de the distinction that Robin made. So uh, I think people, I, I hope it doesn't change the sort of tide against remote work, but I, I do hope that it will help people optimize their days. You know, I hope like in, in my team, we had certain days, well, not, it's not every week that Tuesday has no meetings, but once in a while there are like glorious Tuesday and Wednesday without any meetings. And then the engineers are like, yes, we can just work on code. So I hope like right now, you know, people figure out that uh, like talking to people, even though we don't think it's a big deal, it kind of does drain us a little bit. So maybe certain teams can figure out a way there. Hey, we'll have meetings only on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, un unless it's really important or an emergency and we'll have at least one or two days where you know the people can just focus on their work and get stuff done you know get a get stuff done day so that like i'm i i give myself that right now only because i don't have a lot of work and it's it's really fun to just focus on stuff i see all right then I would say let's come to an end <clears throat> and I would like to um, ask a last question <clears throat> which is about this format. Um, so this is the first uh, Chess Congress meets friends uh, live stream um, to all the, the humans who are watching us it would be great getting your feedback on what we can improve and as well like which topics you would be interesting to see here and that's the question um, to you, um, which topics uh, do you want to see more of like in this format, JS Congress meets friends? Do you have any special interests where you think this is a good format to talk about and also like to share it with the rest of the world? Um, ladies first. 
Uh, oh, I thought you were talking to the people who are watching us. Yes, but okay. I, I would like to ask the same question to you, KK, and then to you, Robin. Ah, okay. So honestly, I think this is so cool. You know, it's it's um, uh, like I'm looking forward to the next discussion. Honestly, you know, I'd like to see how different people approach the same same topic from different viewpoints. That that's really interesting for me. It's really important that. We just don't look at just one viewpoint. We try to understand different viewpoints to the same problem. Um, I, I think, um, yeah, uh, I, I would just like to add, kind of not related to the question exactly that you asked, but just something I wanted to say, um, just for anybody watching this, I, I realize that this time can be really difficult. You know, trust me, I get it. Uh, but sometimes when things are really difficult, that's, it just, you just have to reach in deeper. I don't want to sound cliched, but this is something I'm going through as well. You know, it's just, it sucks being all alone in a continent you're not used to when you're like completely worried about your family. And uh, uh, for me, I just, I realize, of course I'm worried about them, but I'd rather, for me, the new priority is to find a job. So I have one thing that I can focus on. So I'm trying to focus on the things that I can control versus the things I cannot control. And that is helping me out a little bit through this. And so while I'm preparing for stuff, uh, one of my juniors from college reached out and she asked me like, hey, we have a lot of students just sitting at home. Do you have any ideas? And I told them, um, preparing for stuff. Do you, would you like a one hour webinar about data structures and algorithms? They're like, yeah, cool, why not? Uh, and 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 I'd like to, professors with a caveat like I'm in no way an expert in data structures and algorithms like once I finish this live stream I'm gonna go and study for three days just so that I hope I give a good class to those people and but you are, always have to understand there are people like of course far ahead of you but there are always people behind you you know people who are facing catch up people who just don't have the advantages that you have so look around you and instead of focusing on things you can't control look at what, what are the privileges that you do have? What are the things that you can control and what are the things that you can do productively in a day, you know? And hopefully that will give you a little bit more positivity and the control over your life and help you out, not just today, but every day. Mm -hmm. So my two cents. All right. Robin, which topics you, would you be interested to see here in this four months? Yeah. Um... So um, topics, um, yeah, I, I can, um, maybe I can think about uh, that afterwards. I think more than topics, uh, for me, would be really interesting to um, bring together people in the same situation. For um, example, KK, losing a job because of Corona, what, what we can do? And then uh, this, uh, this cut in this kind of format. Or also like um, I just saw in the, in the, in the, in the comments, like uh, Dave posts something like, parallel homeschooling when you have to work at home and be in be an NBN parent. So maybe bring together like people for different contexts, um, also like meetups, conferences, uh, what's the best home office setup? Like, um, like the other, I think there are many topics that uh, um, our, our life touches at the moment. Uh, we, uh, that would be really interesting because, <clears throat> um, so what, um, what I also uh, experienced when um, all the customers broke down and uh, no one was, was, was booking anymore. Uh, I, I called uh, my competitors slash trends because like we're not really competitors. It's like more like, okay, we do, we do the same stuff uh, and there's a, um, a bit of competition, but let's talk. And then we, uh, we had a, a meeting together and we're like, hmm, okay, every, everything is going down. At your place too? Hmm, okay, what we can do? And then we, uh, we, we, we worked out some new workshop formats. We, um, we uh, I think, I never, I never would, would have um, came to that uh, result alone, but with, with different people, uh, even when it's my, my, my competitors, but it was like, okay, let's, let's go together and let's, let's hack and let's go. So I, I think we, we help each other to, to, to go there. And I think the, the, the same you can do with, with every, every other topic, because uh, in the discussion and in the different thoughts, um, or maybe someone read something and then you can like go there. Yeah, you, maybe you can, find an um, easier job or you can uh, uh, live on an easier way with, with home parenting because you have a super nice YouTube channel with someone who normally does yoga lessons and now teaches 
mass class, first class, I don't know, something. And so I think this, this like context conversation is really, really nice. And I'm really happy that you're doing that. And um, yeah, maybe I, uh, I think parenting, parenting, losing a job is like the different topics I would really, really would uh, like because for me, I don't have any kids. Uh, and parenting is like, I, I see my sister, for example, or some friends of mine who have really tough times at the moment but I don't experience on my, on my own. And, uh, I think they really like have so much thing and just to, to talk about, about different solutions. I, I think that would help a lot in the community uh, for, for the parents that are in the jazz community. Yeah. Great, thanks for sharing. Um, I see there is a last question in the chat. So maybe we can answer that quickly. It's an interesting one. So the question is, what's been the most challenging part of remote work for you so far? <laughs> okay, what's been the most challenging part? Um, I feel like when you're in remote work, for me, I, I have a very difficult time holding myself responsible. Like I, I really love to live in the state of denial, you know, and then last minute procrastination, you know, there, there's like a healthy way to do things. But I never go for that. Unless I have to, I never go for that. So previously when I did um, remote work, I have I don't know, five minutes, I'll just watch Netflix. And then I'll definitely get back with this. There's this no boss looking at me. I will totally finish this. And then four hours later, remote work is technically done for the day. And you're like, oh, no, I did not do. And tomorrow I actually have a meeting. And then I stay up until two o'clock to finish it. So holding myself accountable is, is definitely a huge challenge. But I realized, like, the more you, you focus on it, like, you have to understand it, you have to isolate it, and uh, you have to work on yourself, you know. At the end of the day, your mind is, it should be under your control. It's difficult, but just keep on working at it. Uh, by the way, I really like the term like uh, quality time with Netflix. <laughs> have to remember that. Um, so, Robin, what's been the most challenging part of remote work for you so far? So, uh, for me, it's not really the remote working thing because we we already uh, I already worked for, like since five or six years uh, remote only. But this home office part is really hard for me. Uh, the the difference is. Normally, I uh, go in the morning, I take my breakfast, then I go out into a ca um, cafe or something or to a co-working space, then I work there and then I leave the building, like the co-working space, and then in, in, my, in my head it's like done, I'm out. And here when I'm working at home, it's like I'm working in the same room where I'm relaxing, it's like the same that KK said, it's really hard to, to, to set the boundaries okay, when it's relaxing time, when it's like work time. And uh, for me, it, it hits into the different direction. So I never stop working because I'm lying watching Netflix. And uh, yeah, I have my, my, my phone and uh, yeah, writing emails or text or, or with some, because I, I, I always feel I'm I, I in, my, in my office because like it's like here. Yeah, this is really hard for me to, to make, the, make the cut. And uh, yeah, for me, I now try to, to really solve it with like little outside walks so that I really say like, okay, I'm done and then I do a 15 minutes outside work, put all my, my uh, stuff away and then I be, begin my free time. And um, yeah, but that's really challenging because um, yeah, it's hard to, hard to sleep if you have so many work, work ideas going on in your mind all the day. I see. Yep. So let's come to an end. Um, I would like to say thank you uh, to you Kirchana for joining us and especially to you Robin uh, because we uh, usually scheduled this live stream with uh, Feli but there were some last time changes and so uh, yeah she was not able to join so thanks again for this continuous joining part I think um, we talked about today in the forenoon about it and it was like that yep I'm in this was pretty cool so I like thanks again there for <laughs> um, by the way, thank you. I also want to say thank you to the team behind, to Kerstin, who is doing the communication part and taking care that everybody hopefully uh, got the link to, to watch this live stream and also to Marco who cared about the technology behind and as well for the graphics. So thank you very much. 
uh, there is a last chance. Uh, is there someone, uh, Robin or Kirtana, you want to send some virtual hugs or greetings? Uh, I oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Please. I always got first. You, you're doing it this time. <laughs> I want to uh, to send some virtual hugs to uh, to to Philly and hope she really can join like uh, one of the next uh, meetings. But I think it would be really great format to to have her here and uh, yeah. Otherwise, on everybody who feels lonely and needs something, uh, who wants to join our public remote via thing or something else. So uh, yeah, Twitter DMs are open. If you need something uh, or need to connect it, feel free and hugs to community hug. <laughs> yeah, for me, um, I have a stalker that I lovingly called mom. I'm pretty <laughs> sure she's staying up watching this. So. Uh, my family, I love you and big hugs. I know I'm not there right now, but still, guys, you're always in my mind. I, I know you guys worry about me. And of course, to everybody else watching this, you know, um, we are all people. We are all trying to get through this. So I think all of us, you know, if you really want to reach out to anybody, like, of course, please be respectful and professional and all that stuff but and we are all dealing with stuff but if you really do want to reach out to somebody and and make that connection you know hey i'm you know i'd like to level up or i'd like to talk to you about something uh, please do reach out right now everybody is meeting new people online so it's there's never been a better time so we we would all like to at, at some level all of us here we do like to talk to people we do please respect boundaries but at the same time please do reach out, talk to not just us, but anybody in your life that you do want to connect with. And hopefully we'll get through this and get better soon. Awesome. Great. So thank you very much. Thanks uh, to all the people who were watching us. I didn't uh, check YouTube so far. Um, so just if you wonder like how we've been connected, uh, like we've been connected on a different channel because watching YouTube, like with a delay of 30 to 40 seconds, feels a kind of super strange. So Kerstin and me who observed uh, the, the conversations on YouTube and Twitter, uh, like we, we've texted on a different messenger. Um, so that's it for the first edition of Chess Congress Meets Friends. Uh, we want to try the next round uh, in two weeks on the 28th of April. Um, and I think that's it though, uh, so far. Thank you very much for watching and participating. Thank you See you soon. Awesome. Thank Yay. you for that. Bye. Bye-bye. Nice. Bye-bye.